Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead, where today we are going to be showing you three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner on a rocket stove. And we are going to use a griddle for part of our breakfast. We're starting breakfast right now, and it is going to be bacon, pancakes, and raspberry syrup. Over here on the rocket stove, I have the raspberry syrup going. And Jim can come over close and show that I just have I have about two cups of raspberries, and these were frozen raspberries, in about a cup and a half of water. And we're going to bring these to a boil and let them boil for about 20 minutes. And then we will strain them, add sugar, and we will have our syrup, at which time we will, we will put the griddle on top of the rocket stove and finish off our breakfast that way. So we will be back when we're ready to do the next step on the raspberry syrup. All right, our raspberry syrup has really been going to town. It's been boiling and uh, it's been doing that for about 20 minutes. We are ready now for the next step on the syrup, which is to pour it through the strainer and strain all the raspberries out. Syrup is now going to go back in the pot. And I'm going to add, I have two cups of sugar here. I'm going to start with about one cup. We'll see how it goes after one cup. I'm going to stir this in, bring it to a boil, taste test it, and then we will be back when we are ready to then move this to the top of the griddle and start on the bacon and the pancakes. Just real quick check in. The syrup is now off to the side of the griddle and is keeping warm. The bacon is starting to sizzle. Notice how the one closest to the flame, obviously, is the one that is sizzling the most. So the heat is gradually moving this way, taking a little while to get clear over here to this one. But we'll rotate them and then finish up cooking the bacon. I'm rotating the bacon through the hot spot so everything gets done. One of these pieces has a lot of pepper on it. I love peppered bacon. The syrup is boiling right here, and I just wanted to show you, this is the overnight sponge that I put together for the sourdough pancakes. I'm now going to add the eggs and oil and come back out, and we'll be ready to do pancakes in just a minute. All right, struggling with the pancakes a little bit. This end of the griddle is way too cold to do pancakes, so I'm not, these are garbage, sadly. Um, I. A couple of hot spots right here. This one is a little out of the temperature. The syrup I moved over here so I could have a hotter spot on the griddle. We'll come back when the pancakes are ready. We are ready to eat. Here are the pancakes and the bacon. And the syrup is here. So I'm going to put two pieces of bacon on each plate. Ooh, there's that pepper bacon. Jim, I want the yellow plate, okay? Yeah, you got the yellow plate. <laughs> okay, so... This is it new jar of ghee that I'm going to put on my pancakes. And I'm going to wait and not put anything on Jim so they don't get too soggy. And then I'm going to add some raspberry syrup. Oh my goodness, look at this. Woohoo! Oh, yum yum. And Let's have a little taste of these pancakes. Of course, I love sourdough pancakes. The recipe is in our bread book. Oh my goodness. That syrup is divine, absolutely divine. So we're gonna go ahead and have breakfast now. And up next, is our lunch meal on a rocket stove. Welcome to lunch on the rocket stove, where today we're going to do cheesy orzo with vegetables. This is almost like fast food. It goes so fast out there on the rocket stove. And I'm going to show you the ingredients, but this is a recipe with great latitude, and you can add in whatever you want. The base, of course, is orzo. Now, orzo is right here. It is a pasta that is in about the shape of rice, and it cooks very, very fast like in about five minutes or so. And then the vegetables that I've chosen to use today, I have some freeze-dried cherry tomatoes from last season. I have some freeze-dried asparagus. 
that I have mixed with some of our fresh asparagus from the garden this morning. It's just about this much vegetables. I guess it's a little over a cup and you can choose to put in whatever you want. This is our spice mixture. It has uh, basil and thyme and some a pinch of red pepper, some garlic powder, some salt. And this of course is cheese. So we're going to load up so that we can head out to the rocket stove. This is two cups of water and I have put a little bit of olive oil in the top of this water just uh, for the benefit of the pasta. So this is the pot that we're going to use. You're familiar with this one. Um, this is a two-piece pot. This doubles as a frying pan or a lid for this pot. We will be using the lid and it's in our um, Amazon store if you want to check it out. So let's head out to the rocket stove. Our water is boiling so it's time to add some of the food. I'm going to set the lid over here and we're going to add the orzo. The veggies and you could add onion to this. I didn't add any onion. That would have been good. Anything you want in terms of the veggies. Stir this up a little bit. Get the spices in there. More stirring. Oh, oh, it smells heavenly. Lid is going back on. We'll bring this back to a boil and let it boil until the water is absorbed, add the cheese, and we're done. Now, I wanted to just let you know that um, controlling the temperature of the rocket stove is, uh, can be a little bit tricky. You need to get the hang of it. I have found that using long pieces of wood like this one that feed part way in allows you to control the temperature by pulling them in and out. Short ones, if you want to build a flame quickly, you just toss right in Pull that one out just a little bit. And always have fuel in the ready. So Jim has a stack of uh, fuel right here ready for us. We will be back when this is ready to stir the cheese into. And the pollen is lousy today and my eyes are just watering, so I'm not crying. This is done. Look how beautiful this looks. I'm now going to add the cheese. About a half a cup of any kind of cheese you want. And like I said, this is just fast food. This has been under 10 minutes. Now we are going to, oh, one more thing about um, managing the temperature. As I pulled the wood out and let the fire die down, it was perfect because I wanted the heat to go down so that it wouldn't boil as vigorously to, at the end. It needed to slow the boil down so just the last of that water would be absorbed and it was perfect. Okay, look how perfect this looks. We are headed in the house and we're going to have a taste. Here we are. Let's get the lid off. Oh my gosh, this just looks so good. So let's dish some up and have a little taste. This is colorful. It gives us part of our daily supply of vegetables. The pasta is nice with a little bit of protein there. And you could add meat to this. You could add chopped chicken or ham or whatever you wanted. So here goes a taste and I'm going to try to pick out a piece of asparagus that was freeze dried to make sure that I can't tell the difference. I think maybe that one. Mm. The asparagus was fine. I think it needs just a t touch more salt. Boy, can, I can taste the, the red peppers. Gives it a nice little afterbite. Now let me try one with a tomato. Mm. Oh, that tomato. That tomato really gives a nice taste and it was as soft as could be. 
So our vegetables that were freeze dried turned out soft. The cheesy orzo is delicious. And this is a wonderful fast lunch. Or of course it could be a side dish for an evening meal. Next up, a supper that I think you will really enjoy. It is time for dinner and it's threatening rain and it's a lovely end of a May day. And we are ready to do our supper meal for the last segment of our off-grid cooking on a rocket stove. This is a fun and easy, easy meal. If the grid was up, this would best be done in a microwave, quick, easy. But because the grid isn't up, the next easiest is most likely the rocket stove with a Dutch oven pot like the one we have. So we're going to be doing loaded nachos. And this is a favorite meal of Jim and me when it's just a Saturday night and we don't want a lot of fuss. It goes quick and easy. I have a little bit of oil in the bottom just to keep the chips from sticking. And we're gonna layer things in. And all of our foods here, except for those chips, are very high nutrient dense. They have high nutrient density. This really is quite a healthy meal, uh, not counting the chips. <laughs> I am using here some of our, I have shredded a pint of our beef, a pint of our beef chunks. It has no other seasoning on it, so just some drops of meat in here. Then I'm going to go with some black beans. Then I'm sprinkling on some avocado. So is this going to be layered? It'll be layered, several layers. Okay. Sprinkle of cilantro, which is something we love. A few onions, green onions, and then a layer of cheese. And then we repeat the process. So I'm putting in half of the remaining meat. Half of the remaining beans. And half of everything else. And now we're going to finish it. Done with the meat. Done with the beans. Done with the avocado. With the onions. And the cilantro. I forgot to put in layers of chips between these layers, so I'm just going to put them on the top so it's going to be like a sandwich. It will work out just fine. And we are going to finish with this layer of cheese. The lid goes on. We're going to let it cook for about 10 minutes. I may get in there and stir it up a little bit so I can mix the chips up. I can't believe I forgot to layer in the chips, but oh well. And then we'll be back when it's done and we're ready to eat. Not as fast as the microwave, but pretty good for 15 minutes. Look how gorgeous this is.
Isn't that just beautiful? And the smell is wonderful. I have to admit that I blew it not only with the chips, but also with the salsa. So I kind of dug around and added some salsa to the mix as well. Here we go. Oh my goodness. And it has browned on the bottom, a little stuck on the bottom. But not burned. Oh, so this is it. Let's give this a little taste and see how we like it. Oh my goodness, it's wonderful. I think I taste a bit of a smoky taste to it. One more taste over here with some green stuff. Maybe onions, maybe avocado. It is very delicious. I think Jim and I are going to excuse ourselves and go sit in the TV room and enjoy a video. Now, just a couple of things that I've learned uh, while cooking on the rocket stove. Um, in the first place, it's quite fast. It's faster than Dutch oven cooking, which I really like. I especially think that uh, using a cast iron pot on the top is really a good thing because it helps protect things from getting burned. Temperature can be tricky to um, monitor a little bit, but you'll get the hang of it once you get going with it. Uh, the big downside, as far as I'm concerned, is the soot that gets all over the back of the pan. Any time that Jim and I pick up one of these pans or I pick it up trying to clean it, there is this uh, layer of soot that is everywhere. And it's hard to get off our skin, too. I know some people spread Vaseline on the bottom to help protect that. I tried that once, and that was as big a mess to clean up, in my opinion, than just the plain soot. So we just deal with what we have to deal with. Obviously, when we are... Um, compelled into a grid down cooking situation, things are not going to be the same for us. And we are going to have to deal with a whole host of things that are new or, or a little different for us. And we will simply adjust because that's what one of the things humans do best. Thank you for being with us with, with three meals that we've cooked on a rocket stove and the, the, Series will continue with more equipment coming up in future videos, and we'll see you soon.